let his praises ring. Glory in the highest land, shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, everybody. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen, that's good. On the second now. Standing on the promises I cannot fail when the house of death fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Let's sing now. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Good. On the third, everybody. Standing on the promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. <coughs> the liberty Christ makes free. Standing on the promises of God. Stand, say it now. Standing, standing on the promise. God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing promises of God. Amen. Hallelujah. On the fourth. Let's ring it out on this last second fourth. Standing on the promises. Christ the Lord. Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily the spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God. Say it now. Stand me. Standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing the promises of God. Hey, on the last, let's sing it out now, ready? Standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises. Everybody standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, I'm standing of God. Flip back over to 265, please. Let's sing one of my favorites tonight. Everybody knows this. Love lifted me. I'll never forget the night I was sinking deep in sin. And, uh, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. That happened to me one night. And I'm saved tonight because his love lifted me. Let's sing it. 265. Now I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard me cry, from the waters lifted me, say, am I, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else counts, love Lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Hallelujah. Number two, all my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty, so true. There it's my soul, the song. Faithful love in service to him. Be long, everybody. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted 
me when nothing else could help. Lifted me. On the third, everybody, turn it up now. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus complete, say, He will lift you by His love out of the angry wave. He's the master of the sea. Pillows His will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be the same day. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when else could help, love lifted me, love lifted, oh brother Danny here, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted, if he lifted you, holler amen, you may be seated, good morning, good evening, good night, hallelujah, it's good to be here this evening. Amen. He's good in the morning. He's good in the evening. He's good in the night time. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. God, that's right. Well, it's good. Uh, good to see everybody out this evening. Uh, we're glad to see everybody. Hope everybody's had a good week. I was telling them on the way down here. It's it's just hard to believe it's Wednesday night already. It just seemed like a few hours ago we walked out out that door Sunday night. And uh, we have had a lot of response from that youth service Sunday night. I had souls saved. We had a big crowd. We're, it's done on the Internet, and people are watching it all over the country, different countries. And uh, and I think I'm hoping the Lord will use it for his glory. Now we're having another youth night, the last Sunday night in February. So don't forget that. But I think it's a 20. Fourth, the third, or something, whatever, whatever the last Sunday in February is, uh, another youth night, and then another one, the last Sunday in March, uh, and then the big one uh, in April at the Burke County Fairground. We are getting uh, the word out. Already start getting commitments from your family, kin folks. Uh, I want everybody to pack a row full at the fairgrounds for the um, for the uh, youth rally. Brother Barry Spears is an evangelist. Uh, been preaching about 20 years now, I guess. And he has tremendous testimony. And he'll be coming and being with us on Friday night. And then, of course, I'll be playing something, a big thing for Saturday night. I'm narrowing it down right now. It's actually a little late uh, for me to be this, not not have it settled yet. But uh, I'm uh, narrowing it down pretty good. And uh, we'll be we'll be doing that on, the, um, on Saturday night, the 18th. And then on Sunday, Youth services all day, Sunday morning, Sunday night, just like always. So everybody be planning on it now. It's a little earlier than last year, and it's the week following Easter, uh, which which that's not great, but uh, uh, that's just the way the calendar worked out. And so we'll have Easter Sunday on Sunday, youth rally that Sunday, that following weekend. So that means there's going to be a lot of work to do that week and that Sunday night, Easter Sunday night. So I uh, hope everybody's planning on that and praying for it. And we're going to have a special prayer meeting here in a couple of weeks for it. If you're not signed up for the Sweetheart Banquet, right here is the list. You need to get on the list because it's getting time. It's one week from Saturday night. It's really, really looking good. Got some exciting things, some surprises, and uh, you're going to enjoy it. So get signed up tonight, okay? All right, we're going we're gonna to pray. Uh, we've got a lot of... Um, Special requests and texts of people. This person's sick, flu. I, I'll get um, uh, surgery. Miss Desi's daughter actually is having surgery, a little surgery tomorrow. I uh, won't we'll be remembering her in prayer. And then others, um, remember them in prayer tonight that need our prayers. Sick, 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 everywhere. Flu, flu, flu. Uh, whatever this coronavirus is coming from China, uh, whatever. I mean, that's, that's some weird stuff there. It's already confirmed. And, several countries now, hundreds of people in China, and um, that ain't nothing to what's coming on this earth. That ain't nothing to what's coming. Uh, the Bible, there are going to be plagues one day on this earth. People broke out in sores all over them, and it take the mark of the beast, and the, it's really, really going to get bad. So uh, let's pray for those that are sick, not able to get out. Uh, let's pray for our, our uh, uh, youth rally coming up and everything. So if you got something or somebody, on your heart you like us to pray for. Let's do that right now. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we bow our heads and our hearts before you this evening, 
Lord, we do thank you for the opportunity of coming to church. Thank you so much for the privilege of just walking in these doors, to, for the health that we have just to be able to, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you so much for what you did in here Sunday night for that big crowd of young people and the altars and, and the souls were saved and the lives that were touched. I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's made their way out tonight. Some of them that were rushed and maybe just got home from work or school, homework. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with people here tonight. I pray that you bless every single person here this evening. Now, Lord, do what ought to be done. Have your way in our lives tonight. I pray for all those that are sick. I pray for Brother Jeremy, who's been sick this week, Lord. And, and I pray for Miss Desi's daughter getting ready to have that surgery. I pray for all the kids uh, that have been sick. I remember Miss Dot, Lord, that you can uh, touch her, Lord, and make it that she can come back and be with us at church soon. I pray for all of our bus kids this week, Lord, wherever they are, whatever they're doing right now, I pray that you'd be real to them and deal with their families and bring them in here soon, Lord. I pray, God, for uh, uh, the people in the world, our leaders, our, our nation's leaders, our country's leaders, our president, Lord, and senators and Congress. Oh, God, send a great revival, Lord, to uh, our country, Lord, and help mercy on those that are in the military, those that are in the uh, uh, in authority, anywhere as you're sending your word. I pray that you'd help them. I pray, God, that your will will be done here this evening, Lord. Help us, God, understand your word and get a blessing tonight. Do what ought to be done now tonight, Lord. Bless the kids in their class, Lord, and just open our ears and hearts and minds. Lord, I pray for the youth rally. The power of God will come down. Oh, God, may this be the youth rally. The Holy Ghost uses to spark revival in this country one more time. God, I know you're able to do it. God, I don't have no doubt in my mind, Lord, that you're God and that you're able. And I pray that you'd send a mighty move of your spirit, Lord, and that souls will be saved and that lives will be changed for the glory of God. Lord, let our kids know and have a, have a close relationship with you. Lord, don't let them be cold and indifferent and backslidden grow up leaving the faith. God, I pray that you be real to them, Lord. Every one of them, God, let them know you're there, Lord, and be with them in the hard times, in the good times. Take care of them tonight, Lord. I pray you bless this service and our fellowship together. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to have a, a little time of fellowship here in just a minute. Uh, kids are going to be going back. We're, we're splitting the uh, boys and girls, older boys and girls tonight. Got something real special for you. And so uh, I know you're going to enjoy it. And so we're going to, uh, don't forget now, Saturday morning, we're going visiting 930 every bus route. And even, even not even bus route, everybody needs visiting. And everybody, you either need to visit or be visited, one of the two. You're a missionary or a mission field. Uh, uh, one of the two. So let's all, uh, don't forget that. And then Sunday morning, Sunday school, bright and early. Okay. Let's stand. Everybody turn around and be friendly in the Lord. Everybody be friendly to each other. If you're not signed up for Sweetheart Banquet, now's the time to do it right now.
Let's just remain standing for offering now. Amen. Everybody get ready to give this evening. With our giving tonight, he'll bless you for it. Guarantee it. I guarantee it. You never have to feel uh, wrong giving to God, buddy. I tell you what, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. So let's all give tonight. Honor the Lord. If you didn't get your offering in uh, Sunday, you might want to do that tonight. And, and he'll bless you for it, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for the privilege of praying. We ask you, Lord, that you'd have mercy upon us. Forgive us of all of our sins. Lord, I pray that you'd bless this offering tonight. Let it be what you want it to be for the glory of God. Meet the need, we pray, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, after it passes you, you can go. kids. Amen. Don't listen to the devil. I didn't mention there a minute ago, but uh, uh, I hope that y'all, uh, Miss Pat over here, you know they'll be they'll be moving, going moving to Alabama Sunday, so y'all be sure and speak Miss Pat, and this young man right here beside her, that, that boy where he's the one that's caused all this trouble. No, he he's going he's going to jump up and shout when I tell him to. No, he ain't. but really we're going to miss them really bad and they're leaving Sunday and I hate that. Let's all pray that they'll be able to move back soon. Amen. But seriously, y'all y'all pray for them and uh, the Lord just bless them and take care of them on uh, down there on their trip and all. Uh, tonight I want you to take your Bible turn to Galatians chapter 1 uh, to start with. I think we'll start there in Galatians chapter 1. And um, uh, we'll, we'll look at the verse there to start with. And then we're going to look at several more. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Let me just tear on this, but Dylan, if you don't care. And um, I want I want to do something. Test some one, two. One. I want to do something... Uh, I've been asked about several times lately, and um, I've had several people ask me lately about uh, the Mor a Mormon. What's a Mormon? And the reason is because they've been we've been playing basketball with the, with the guys and stuff. And uh, so tonight we're going to take a little while and, and take you to the Bible and show you what the Mormon Church is, or professed church, or the LDS. That's Latter-day Saints, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And uh, there are many, many branches of them out all over the world, different, uh, and just like Baptists. You can't, uh, uh, you, when somebody says a Baptist believes certain things, you can't pin that on all Baptists, obviously. And uh, with Mormon, it would be the same thing, Catholic, same way. So uh, I want to say, uh, to begin with tonight, this is in no way, a, a criticism or an attack on any any person or people. Um, like a lot of time when I teach on the Catholic Church, people say, "Well, he's he don't like Catholics," and I've, I've never said that. And it's got nothing to do with what you like. Uh, my job is to teach the truth about what uh, they believe. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. And uh, it'd be you need to be informed. You need to be enlightened. You need to know you need to know what you believe and why you believe it. And the only way you're ever going to know the truth is a uh, you know the truth, and expose error. And uh, so we'll do that tonight. We'll start in Galatians chapter 1, look at verse 6. And uh, the Apostle Paul wrote here under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. 
but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That's a pretty strong word, pervert, like pervert. That's what that is, like a perverted gospel. But though we or an angel from heaven, them strong words, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now hold your finger there. You think about what strong words that is. That's how sure that Paul knew he was right. I mean, they didn't have a Bible back then. He had the Old Testament, all he had. And he told him, maybe he said, I don't care if an angel from heaven comes down here and preaches something that we ain't preach, let him be cursed. That man knew what he believed and why he believed it, didn't he? That's pretty sure of yourself. He knew what he believed. And he knew why he believed it. Now, if an angel from heaven floated down through that ceiling right now and hovered about this high over the floor and said, I say unto you, after we all come to, we would want to say, what in the world? Uh, after passing out. But you know what? If that angel from heaven, he didn't say one from hell. Nobody going to believe one angel from hell. If that angel from heaven came and said some contrary to the gospel of Christ, he said, let him be accursed. That was strong words. That's how sure, uh, how non-inclusive Paul was. Oh, how judgmental, how narrow-minded, how egotistical, how, oh, that he thought he was right and everybody else was wrong. No, he thought God was right and anything else was wrong, just like Noah did. Uh, so tonight, uh, there was a man named Joseph Smith one time that said an angel appeared to him and gave him some stuff. And it's contrary to the gospel of Christ. And that's how the whole Mormon church was built. As I said again, this is not an attack on anybody. I'm not trying to judge anybody individually. Not Nothing like that. I'm not trying to be dogmatic or judgmental or talking down on nobody, nothing like that. I'm talking about the official Mormon church and what it believes. There's offshoots of that Mormon church all over the out Midwest that really get on the lunatic fringe. Uh, those sister wives show and all that stuff they have on TV and uh, the uh, polygamy that's believed and practiced still in Utah today, although officially they had to uh, deny polygamy to be admitted into the union, uh, the state of Utah is basically just about a Mormon state. And uh, Glenn Beck, the famous news commentator, uh, talked about his conversion to Mormonism. And even though he, he pr puts forth a lot of, right moral values, uh, his belief is in this system. Now, let's let's talk about this just for a little bit tonight. And I want you to notice what's considered a cult. There, there's a difference between <laughs> Christian denominations and what we call cults. If somebody, and somebody might disagree with this, but somebody uh, that hears me on the internet, but if somebody believes that the death and of Christ is our means of salvation and the blood of Jesus Christ pays for our sin. He's God's only son and God's only way to heaven. They may disagree on a lot of other things, but could be considered a Christian denomination. When I say that, I'm talking about, of course, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, uh, Church of God, uh, you know, most of what we would know in this part of the country as Christian denominations. When a person starts believing another gospel or that Jesus Christ's death isn't the means of salvation and claims another book is inspired to go along with and supplement the Bible, they are not a Christian denomination, they're a cult. There's a difference. I'll give you the marks of a cult. Number one is claiming extra biblical revelation. Extra biblical revelation. I know the Bible says this, but God told me something else. Now listen, if I ever get up here and tell y'all that God spoke to me and told me something and it's against this Bible 
you have a meeting with me right then and say, Brother Danny, are you on something? Have there somebody shot you full of dope? Have you got dementia? Have you lost your mind? I won't say that if I'm in my right mind. Uh, uh, and do something about it. Amen? You know, people say, oh, you better watch Follow Them Preachers. You'll turn into a cult. You can't never be a cult just going by the Bible. Where they what turns into cults where you start following a man against the Bible. Y'all have never heard me one time saying, follow me, I don't care what the Bible says. You say, here's what I say, you follow the Bible, I don't care what he says. You follow the Bible, I don't care what they say or you say or your mamma. If an angel come in mamma's bedroom one night and said, mamma, I am here to tell you uh, that Allah is also God. Say, mamma, you've been drinking too much eggnog. Uh, uh, you've done been deceived by a demon. Amen. <laughs> That's right. The marks of a cult are extra biblical revelation. The marks of a cult are works added for salvation. Now, this comes mighty close to putting the Catholic Church in the... Now, I'm not saying that Catholic people are not saved. There's a lot of saved Catholics in spite of their church, not because of it. The church teaches that when a priest blesses the mass, it turns into the body and blood of Jesus. That's heresy. It's not true. It's a picture of the body and blood of Jesus. The church teaches that Mary was sinless, never committed a sin, and didn't have to be saved, and was raptured into heaven without ever dying. That's heresy. Mary had other children. Mary was a sinner. Mary had the sages like anybody else. The Catholic Church teaches false doctrine, people. Now, when you say that, people say, oh, you don't like Catholics. You need to go to the ear doctor. You didn't, you weren't listening. I said the official church doctrine teaches that wrong. A lot of good moral uh, uh, Catholic people that try to live right. Some of them serve God. Some of them, some of them are even honest to goodness saved in spite of, not because of their church. Number three, a cult has an uncertain hope. They never know if they're going to heaven when they die because they never know if they've done enough good. Number four, they have an earthly head. There's always some big guy at the top that's over the whole thing, like Joseph Smith. Uh, like uh, after he died, Brigham Young. Y'all know the, the university, football, and basketball, uh, Brigham Young University. Number, number five, they claim special discoveries, like we'll talk about tonight. Number six, they have a denunciation of all others. Every cult believes they and only they are right. You know how you know we're not a cult? We can't. I just got up here and told you there's some saved Catholics. They ain't even know we're near Baptist. We don't believe that. A cult believes only us and our little group is the only one going to heaven. When you see a bunch of people like that, uh, you're, you're messing with some crazy people. Messed up. Uh, the Lord's got a lot of people in this world, uh, all over this world. They may not believe right. I've, I've heard people say, "Well, how can a man, how can a man be believe you can have to be have works to keep stay saved? How can he be saved? Because he got saved right and got saved by grace, and then got taught wrong. That's how, and that happens. There's a lot of good people like that. A lot of good people like that uh, uh, was taught wrong. Now, not only that. Number number seven is a misuse of finances. And there's always some crooked financial deals. Number eight, they sell things on the street, little trinkets and stuff to raise money for the let's y'all remember the Moonies? Sun Young Moon, the Moonies. I don't know if old Sun Young if he's alive or not now, but boy, back in the in the eighties, late seventies, man, them Moonies, they'd be at the airport. And it'd be something I had them try to get me one time, and they were having these books, and they'll say, Here, free books. And I'd go over and I'd say, Oh, I want my free book. I did it just on purpose because I knew what they were. I want my free book, ma'am. And she'd say, Well, we asked for a donation of, of, of $20. And I said, Oh, well, I don't have no donation. Uh, can I have my free book? She said, Well, we asked for a donation of $10. I said, well, I don't have, I just want my free book. Sign says free book. You want me to free book? And she said, no, we need a donation. I said, oh, so they're not free. You're selling them. No, no, we're not selling them. But I can't have them unless I give you money. 
That's and you can be tax exempt and do junk like that. And that's like saying Belk saying free suits. Come on, men, get you a free suit for a love offering of one hundred and twenty dollars. We're gonna give you a suit. See how crooked that is. The world can see through that stuff, uh, and and that's that's what they do. Uh, sell thing on three Never, nine. Here's a sure mark of a cult. Never, they never major scriptures that are aimed toward Christians in the body of Christ. It's always some some obscure, remote verse back in Ezekiel somewhere that has nothing to do with a Christian and build a doctrine on it. Ecclesiastes, German. I'm not saying them is not the word of God. I'm saying those are not scriptures aimed toward Christians in the body of Christ. So, that being said, on September the 21st, 1823, somewhere along in there, 17-year-old Joseph Smith, 17-year-old boy in New York. Now, I've heard them say this. You beware of any religion that begins in America. There ain't never been a religion worth shooting that originated in America. We didn't get our religion from America. Our, our belief, our Bible came from Jerusalem, buddy, Israel and Jews. Christianity came from the east. The, the, uh, I guess it's the Near East, Mid East, whatever Israel is. Uh, they, that's where Christianity came from. No religion began in America has ever been worth shooting. America don't produce religion. Americans don't do it. And on this 17-year-old boy was out in the woods to pray. He saw some visitors come to him one of which was the angel Moroni. It was, um, he told Joseph Smith, the 17-year-old boy, where to find a set of golden plates containing the fullness of the gospel. He found the plates buried in a stone box in Palmyra, New York, the next day. But Moroni would not let him have them uh, for three or four years. He moved to Pennsylvania and began to translate the plates, golden plates, with the aid of two mag magic stones, Urim and Thummim. That's the Old Testament priest lights on their chest. Now, this is a 17-year-old boy. Bi uh, autobi not biographies and stuff say that Smith was known for tall tales. And he was known for the occult, devil in, in the occult. So I'm going to read you some stuff here. I'm going to read you some quotes here in, in this book rather than just say it all. Uh, remember what I read to you a minute ago and uh, about the only, only, only one God. And uh, we'll, we'll look here and see him. He was known in the region of New York for digging for buried treasure. He found gold plates and using occult stones to divine for hidden treasure. Joseph Smith was heavily involved in the occult before he ever began to receive revelation from his messengers of light. Joseph Smith claimed that he went into the woods near his house to pray and he went to ask God which of all the Christian churches was the true church and which one was right and which one he should join. He recorded this event in his own words and that story is now considered scripture by LDS member, Latter-day Saints, by Mormon. Now, for you that don't know the difference between Mormon and Jehovah Witnesses, jo uh, jo uh, Russell, what was it? Pastor Russell started the Jehovah Witness because he didn't believe in hell. And... Uh, the Mormons are the guys that ride around on the bicycles, the short sleeve shirt and a tie and bicycle doing their missionary work. How many of you have ever had them come to your house? Raise your hand. That's everybody in here. Isn't that a shame that we can't say that for Bible believing Christians? But anyway, uh, uh, he, it's standard works of the Mormon church called the Pearl of Great Price. 
in chapter 2, verse 15, it says this, quote, I'm quoting Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon church. I knelt down and began to offer up the desire of my heart to God. I had scarcely done so when immediately I was seized upon by some power which entirely overcame me and had such astonishing influence over me as to bind my tongue that I could not speak. All right. You dibble dabbling in the occult. You're messing around with divine and magic stones. So you go out in the woods one day and say, God, which church is really right? And a power comes on you and you holds your tongue so you can't speak and grabs you. The darkness gathered around me and it seemed for a time as if I were doomed to destruction. Does that sound like exerting all my powers to call upon God and deliver me out of the power of this enemy which had seized upon me at the very moment when I was ready to sink in despair and abandon myself to destruction, not to an imaginary ruin, but to the power of some actual being from the unseen world who had such marvelous powers that I've never felt in any being. Just at this moment of great alarm, I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head above the brightness of the sun. You know where he got that? From Paul's conversion. Which descended gradually until it fell upon me. Now you remember what your Bible says. Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light. Remember that? You say, well, how do you know it's Satan? Just keep listening. You'll figure it out. It no sooner appeared than I found myself delivered from the enemy, which held me bound, which when the light rested upon me, I saw two personages whose brightness and glory defy all descriptions standing above me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name and said, pointing to the other, this is my beloved son, hear him. All right, y'all with me? He's out in the woods, fooling around with magic stones and stuff, and says, God, which church is really right? Which one do you want me to join? All, I don't know which one's right. All of a sudden, a power seizes over him with darkness, and he can't, he can't get loose, and two, two bright things come down out of the sky and hover in midair, and one of them said, this is my beloved son whom I'm with loose. So I'm assuming that one's God, and that was Jesus. I wouldn't trust him. You know, let's, let's, let's read this. My object in going to inquire of the Lord was to know which of all the Christian churches was right to join. I always worry about these people, and, and this part of the country is full of them. I talk to them, you on bus rat? Go out on visitation. You'll meet them all the time. You might work with people. I always say, I don't do church. Ain't none of them churches what they claim to be. You better watch out for anybody that talks like that. You better watch out for people that say they ain't no real churches and all of them's fake and none of them's right. You better watch out. That person's full of the devil talk like that. Let me tell you something, brother. The Lord's church is alive and well on this earth. It's got its faults, the church of Jesus Christ, but I'm telling you, his bride be is still here and still going to make it one day by the grace of God. All right, let me finish reading this. No sooner, therefore, that I get possession of myself so as to be able to speak, than I ask the persons who stood before me in the light of all the sects, the Christian churches, which was right and which one I should join. Here we go. So here's the answer. I was answered that I must join none of them for they were all wrong. And the personage who addressed me said that all of their creeds were abomination in his sight and all their teachers were corrupt. 1820. There wasn't no good churches in 17, 16, 15, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. They're all corrupt. All their teachers are false. They're ever one wrong. You boy, we're going to give you the truth. Son, I'm telling you, if that was the Lord that told him that, that was not God, people. You say, how do you know? Because the Lord said, if anybody else come and preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. 
Whatever that was is a curse of God. You hear me tonight? That's not on my authority. That's on the authority of this book right here. That's a curse of God. That doctrine's a curse of God. I'll read you just a little bit more where he said, um, that moment in 1820 was the moment that opened the door to Mormonism, the Latter-day Saints. A messenger of light told Joseph Smith that all the churches were wrong. They're all wrong, and you're going to be the only one right. And, uh, oh, my goodness. Let's, let's look just a minute. I won't take too much longer. Um, let's take just a minute. The Mormon Jesus, the Mormon church believes Jesus is, quote, our elder brother who pointed the way. He pointed the way. But he's not the way as me and you understand it. Jesus Christ was the, uh, was the God of the Old Testament, but once he took on a physical form, had to justify or earn his own spiritual salvation through his works in the flesh, just as each of us must. Mormonism teaches that Jesus suffered for our sins in the Garden of Gethsemane, personal salvation, which means exaltation to Godhood, conditionally upon our obedience to the laws and ordinances of the LDS gospel. In other words, his death on the cross provided a general salvation whereby all of us will be resurrected to be judged for our own works. And that's why you'll never see a cross on a Mormon church. It's not that important. It's just what Jesus did. The Mormon church teaches there's four basic points on the doctrine of God. They teach that God the Father has a flesh and bone body just like man. The Bible says God is a spirit. And uh, he does not have a fleshly body except the body of Jesus Christ when he was here. Second, Mormons teach that God, listen to this, evolved from mortal man. And Mormons teach polytheism is the belief in existence of more than one God. Millions of gods. Father gods, mother gods, grandfather gods, grandmother gods, and great-grandfather gods, and every male Mormon is striving to become a god himself. And their main teaching is, God was once as we are now, we may one day be like him. As we are, God once was, as God is, we may become. So if you are dedicated enough, you will eventually become your own God over your own universe and will live with your wives and spiritually populate other planets and universes and keep on and on and on and on and on and on and on, going on and on and on. I won't have time to get into all the specifics. They have they have the temples. Their Mecca, the great Mecca, is temple headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, that's why, I don't know, has anybody in here ever been to Salt Lake City? I have. Uh, uh, Louise, uh, there's two of them. Uh, that's a strange place, man. I've been to Salt Lake City, been to the airport, and I tried, and everybody there uh, is Mormon. You know, they they made that movie a long time ago called The Trail of Tears or something. What was that, y'all? About the, when they got run out of this part of the country or something, when they went all the way to Utah and settled. Remember that a long time ago? Long, it's when I was a kid. They made some kind of documentary out of it or something. I remember my mom talking about it. But anyway, uh, they went out and populated Utah. Uh, Joseph Smith himself, uh, let's see, I got it here, had 50 wives. Brigham Young had 27 uh, with 56 kids. And I don't know where our ushers are coming down the aisle here, Frank. Come, oh, he's coming to see Aunt Panene. And uh, anyway, uh, the uh, you got to, God the Father has a body of flesh and bone as tangible as man. Their Mecca is Salt Lake City. They have temples in uh, Los Angeles. I think the one in Washington, D.C. I don't know where the closest one to here is. I'm assuming it's Washington, D.C. I don't know that. A Mormon temple. Is that right? So that takes care of the South. Because I know I have a friend of mine. She's been here before, played the piano. Miss Jennifer, y'all remember Jennifer Boone, her mother, 
was a, was a, a devout Mormon for years. She finally got saved. I, she's only their family is the only Mormons I remember that that got saved, and uh, uh, she came out of it. She had been baptized 150 times, and only special Mormons are baptized for dead people. Like if you if your if your uncle died last month in Georgia, you say, "Oh my goodness, my uncle wasn't ready to meet the Lord." You can go be baptized for your uncle. Uh, or, or all dead relatives. She had been baptized over 150 times for all of her dead relatives. They've been baptized for Napoleon and and Hitler and everybody, uh, uh, but because they that scripture in First Corinthians 15 talks about being baptized for the dead. They think that means being baptized for somebody who's dead, and that scripture is saying that Jesus Christ is alive, and it don't do you no good to get baptized if he's dead. What if you're baptized? Somebody's dead, and they completely misconstrued that scripture. Uh, the it, the only certain ones are celestial marriages are held in the temple. You can't just do it around here. You'd have to go to the temple to have a celestial marriage and produce spirit children or whatever whatever they call it. And you you uh, they they wear underwear. I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be funny or nothing. But this weird looking underwear that like like them old bathing suits that people used to wear back in the 1920s where they're like that coming right here and then right here. And the dedicated ones who are able to go to the temple who wear that underwear, that is never, ever separated from your body. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you cannot lose contact with that underwear. That means when you take it off, take a shower, one foot has to stay on it so you get out, put on a clean pair or ever how you're going to do it, but it can never lose contact with your body. Just weird stuff like that. Uh, because that, that holy garments, they're very confused. They confuse, They believe that Jesus, when he arose from the dead, came over to America and preached the gospel to the Indians and baptism and started work here because the Nephites or whatever they called them were killed by the Indians and the only one left was... Mormon and his son Moroni and he's the one that gave Joseph Smith all that information but anyway I ain't got time to get into all of that but um, uh, there's all kinds of evidence against the Book of Mormon for example did you know every coin in the Bible has been found in abundance like the shekel and uh, uh, the pence you know the, the coins mentioned in the Bible they found thousands of them no coin in the Book of Mormon has ever been found. You know why? Because it's a made-up lie. It's not true. Uh, I think um, uh, June 27, 1844, Joseph Smith was finally arrested because the Mormon Legion had destroyed a newspaper office for criticizing their belief in polygamy having multiple wives at, at the all same time like they try to do. Smith was eventually shot and became their first martyr. And Brigham Young became the leader. And there come the, the uh, university, BYU, Brigham Young. All right, I'm going to stop right there. I'm not an expert, but I've got a book here that is, and it's the Holy Bible. And it'll answer any question you've got. And you have to be careful uh, and you know what you believe, why you believe it. Okay. You're kidding. Jeff. I've been down. And like you said, they baptize like they know ten people, fifteen people in your family that didn't know the Lord or that died. That's about they baptized about fifteen times every time. And in a moment church, they they won't let you say amen. I'm sure. 
Well, you know, anytime you're talking to anybody, Jehovah Witness or anybody, yeah, I'm coming. If you ask him, are you a Christian? They're going to say yes. But you got to remember, their definition of Christian ain't our definition of Christian. I've, I've talked to Jehovah Witness before, and I said, so, so you've been born again? Oh, yes, I've been born again. He said, well, great. Let's put it there, brother. No. What's it, you know what they call being born again? When they saw the, the light of what their church teaches. They call that being born again. They don't call it repenting of your sin and the Holy Ghost coming in and circumcising you uh, in heart and body, cutting you loose from this old flesh, writing your name in heaven, old-fashioned, getting saved like men, men you do, the Bible teaches. They think when you come out of error into truth, that you're being born again. All right, who else? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> sure would. You're doing the Catholic Church here, yeah, if you want to. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes, he's all right. That was Noah's wife talking about, wasn't it? Joan of Ark. I've heard it. Anybody else? That's right. Kid. You're kidding. Wow. <laughs> Sure, man, help yourself. <laughs> Call a little ditch, need dug in out and back. <laughs> Put them to work. Now that, listen, them, those guys are very nice and polite, and I, and you feel sorry for them out there in 95 degrees and with a tie on, riding a bicycle. And you, you don't see them as much, it don't seem like anymore. Huh? Oh, they don't ride bikes as much anymore? I thought that was Jehovah's Witness. Was it? No, I don't. I remember I showed, listen, if you want a, if you want a documentary to watch, I recommend, I'm sure you can get it on, on YouTube, The God Makers. What's The God Makers? You have to be on YouTube. It's about a 60-minute video, uh, and it's very well documented. Uh, I We showed it in Marion one time, and it got put in a newspaper, and we had the office mess ever was. Had two whole rows of Mormons come that night, and they just sit back there. I went, oh, boy, we're going to have trouble tonight. And and my, we went ahead and showed it, and everything went great. They left, and did, and they actually come back two or three times, a couple of times after that. I think, I think deep down inside, they were, they were curious. They were curious. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. That's why the Catholic Church does. Because you ain't got nothing to preach. You got to do something. You got to do something to act, seem religious. If you ain't, then what do they preach? And I asked them, why did they do that? Because the fact that they didn't say more than they said, well, have you seen this week? And I said, yeah. Well, your sacrifice was 2,000 years ago. Coach? Yeah. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to do that, but I did. I did. I, I and I gave a little little speech before it. You know, we all gather around half the circle and pray after the game. And he's right. I'd never heard it that quiet. And I was hollering. I was hollering loud. I said, "Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. I'm glad we don't have to go to hell." 
And I also give them an uh, invitation to the youth service and a chicken track too that night. And uh, not, we're no better than they are. I ought, to get, I ought to be in hell, but but they need the Lord. They need the truth. And that's the first time they've ever been in the in the play basketball. I, I don't even know where the Mormon church is around here. But uh, uh, is, is there more than one in Burke County? I don't even know where one's at. Where's it at, Jeff? Your home church. <laughs> You the deacon over, wasn't you? Really? Really? I... Right, right. Yeah, you can do that. Say, I'll, I'll come to any special thing you've got if you'll come to our special thing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You don't have to worry about that. Ethan, one of his friends at school, is a, is a Seventh-day Adventist. And you know the Burke County's full of them things. We'll we'll study on them sometime. Burke County's full of Seven Day Adventists. Big bunches. I don't know how it got so many. And Ethan said his daddy wouldn't let him come with Ethan to our to our youth rally. Said he wouldn't let him. They believe you know if you take, go to church on Sunday, you've, that's the mark of the beast or something. You know, and all kind of weird stuff like that. They only only on Saturday. Of course, they don't even know when the Sabbath is. Uh, it's Friday evening at six to Saturday evening at six. But um, if you're going to keep the Sabbath, you got to do it Saturday evening at actually Saturday morning, like one o'clock or Saturday 10 o'clock in the morning is six in Jerusalem. To do it right, you'd have to do it Friday morning to Saturday morning. If you're really going to do it right and you can't build a fire, you can't go, but so far uh, they, they don't, Know what you're talking about, but anyway, I told Ethan. He said, "Would you let me go to their sir?" I said, "Sure." I said, "If they're having a meeting or something, you tell him you'll be glad to go sit with him if he'll come to the youth rally." I ain't a bit scared of Ethan going over there and finding something more powerful than the youth rally. Not a bit. When you when you got the truth, you don't have to be intimidated or afraid of anything else. Not that not because of us, but because of God and His Word. And like like Tim said, uh, those those polite guys. I mean, they're rough now. They're rough. You know, we it, we banged up after it was over. But uh, uh, y'all pray for, in a, next week. I think I think we play them next week because I felt awful. Then. There's about ten of them. I said, "There's ten guys. There are thirty wives." <laughs> I did <didn't, laughs> I was in there thinking that, that that's probably not true here in this town. That's probably not true. And do not put that on, cut that out. Because I, I mean that totally respectfully. Amen. All right. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Just um, hope you learn a little bit. We'll do some more. We'll do some more here pretty soon, Lord willing, and uh, study a little bit more. All right. Let's bow our heads and pray. We'll be dismissed. Jeff, you go ahead and in a, in a Christian Baptist way. <laughs> Don't talk to Maroney, but this means go ahead, brother. Amen.